Today, we're gonna build and install this control unit for my CNC machine. Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. Today we have a super fun video, which is a follow-on from my previous video. So in the previous video, if you haven't watched it, I will link it above. We designed the CNC control unit for my Onefinity. This will allow me to turn on my spindle and my vacuum and a variety of other things remotely from the front panel rather than going to the switches that are on the different devices. So today we finish the build, I explained all of the wiring that is inside, I talk about the microcontroller that controls the entire thing, and then we actually install the unit that is on the front panel of my One Infinity setup station here. So if you like this type of content, we do this all the time, a lot of Fusion 360, a lot of building, a lot of CNC, a lot of 3D printing. So if you like that type of content, please consider subscribing ringing that bell, very important these days. So let's go ahead and cut over to my explanation of how I built a controller, what's on the inside, and then the installation process. All right, well here is the front panel as finally designed and implemented. As you can see, we have the four control switches over here. We have an LED indicator for the Z probe, well, the X, Y, and Z probe, where you plug the probe in here, and this will light up when it makes contact. We have our four AC indicators here, our power on switch for the unit itself, and then the USB port for connecting to the microcontroller. Pretty straightforward. I have yet to put the labels on them because uh, I'm actually not sure where I'm going to plug things in right now, but I will put the labels on and then we will go ahead and get it mounted. Now let's go ahead and peel back the top a little bit and talk about what's on the inside. Here we are in the inside of the controller unit and at first blush it might look like the wiring is a little bit disorganized or maybe all over the place. But I can assure you it is not. I actually think I did a fairly decent job containing the mess as it were. But let me go ahead and walk you through the major components of the inside here. So on the right hand side here we have all of the control switches. This is what will turn on the spindle and the vacuum and everything else. Across the back here we have our solid state relays. We have a power supply here that will power the microcontroller. I will talk about that a little bit more in just a bit. We have our USB connector here, which goes to the microcontroller. Our power switch down here on the bottom, and then our input for our probe and our LED for a probe. On the back, we have the two fans, one on each side. Now they both do blow in rather than one blowing in and one blowing out. Uh, I did that to maximize the amount of airflow inside of the unit. I probably do need to put some sort of cooling vents in here to let the air escape. For right now, it's actually doing a fine job through just the gaps that are in the enclosure itself because it's not a very tight fit. Behind the solid state relays here, we have some heat sinks connected each one of them to wick that heat away from them. And then attached to the heat sinks are these temperature probes, which sense how hot each one of the relays is getting. And then when it hits the threshold temperature, which I currently have set to 35 degrees Celsius, it'll turn the fans on. My original intent was to ramp the fans up slowly as the temperature was slowly increasing, but it turns out it was just easier just to turn them on at full speed. They don't really push that much air, but turning them on at full speed the minute it hits that threshold is the easiest and fastest way I found. Now here on the, what is the bottom of the unit, we have our input power here. There are some switches and then the 120 volts in because I am in the United States. And then on the bottom here, we have these connectors, these receptacles, which is the power out. Now these were push in receptacles and because this enclosure is a quarter of an inch thick, they didn't quite snap into place the way that they should have. So I just used a little bit of liquid nails and, and glued them into place and they seem to be holding just fine. 
The wiring for the input and output power here is relatively simple. I have the neutral line in the United States, the black wire here in this case, tied directly from the input power to the output power. And then I have the load line, uh, which is the red wire in this case, tied from the input power to the relay, and then another red wire tied from the relay back out to the output power. And that breaks the current flow using this solid state relay. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about this microcontroller and what I got going on here. So it looks relatively complicated, I would say, but it's not. So what I did is I created a motherboard to hold the microcontroller, which is right here. This is a tiny Pico. It also has an IO expansion port, which increases the number of inputs and outputs that the microcontroller has. And then it brings the IO out to these headers where I can screw the wires in. Now this expansion board is really not necessary, but it does help dramatically. Certainly it keeps the wiring all in one place. It allows the quick connection of the wires through the headers, and then it provides a place for the fans to be connected and the temperature probes right here. So I chose the Tiny Pico microcontroller for this application because it is a very small footprint and has the Wi-Fi that I want to ultimately have on this unit. It is an ESP32 based microcontroller. It has all the features of a normal ESP32 and actually has a couple additional features like battery charging and some other things that I don't necessarily need. Uh, but it has this little Wi-Fi antenna here, which hopefully will be good enough to broadcast and get onto my home Wi-Fi once I enable that portion of the application. For right now, all I do is I have the microcontroller talking to the IO expansion. The microcontroller is constantly sensing the state of the IO expansion unit, which is tied to the switches. So when a switch is pressed, the microcontroller senses the switches on. And so it tells the IO expander to turn on the LED corresponding to the switch, as well as turn on the corresponding control signal to the solid state relay. And so this is consistent across all four of the switches. The probe has a similar function when the probe is switched. It'll turn on the probe LED. And then it also controls these fans. Now the fans are tied directly to the microcontroller in this case, because I am using pulse width modulation or PWM uh, to control the speed of the fans. And you can't do that with this particular IO expander. The temperature probes are connected uh, directly to the microcontroller as well, because it is using an I squared C protocol, which is just significantly easier to implement directly to the microcontroller rather than through this IO expansion port. On the side here, we have the power supply. The power supply controls the power input for the microcontroller and the IO expansion and drives all of the LEDs on all of the switches and the probe input here. It is tied directly to this power switch down here on the bottom and uh, the power turns on the power supply. It is connected to the same input as this particular relay. If I were to do this again, I might want to give this a separate power input, but I got to say having uh, five inputs on this unit would be quite a lot. So I thought it was no big deal. I'm going to tie the controller to this particular solid state relay, which does not pull a lot of current. So pulling the power supply off of this unit is not a big deal. Uh, but we do tie this switch directly into the power supply, which then leads to the microcontroller. So this switch controls whether or not the microcontroller is on or off. And then the switch here that controls the AC in will control whether or not the entire unit is powered or not. But it also controls the controller. So it's a little bit of a downside, but not a big deal. It worked out and uh, I think everything's going to be just fine the way it is. So that is a summary of everything that's going on in the inside here. I am going to go ahead and zip it up, screw it all back together, and then we're going to go ahead and install it. <laughs>
Well, that was the build video. I hope you enjoyed it. So I showed a little bit of what was on the inside, showed you the enclosure, and then we did a quick installation montage video. And I think it worked out very well. I have everything that I need right at my fingertips, right there at the front of the CNC machine there. So if you want to build one of these on your own, I will have all the parts listed down below and linked. Some of them are affiliate links. That does give me a little kickback to help this channel a little bit. It doesn't cost you any extra, but it does help the channel. So if you do choose to make your own, please encourage you to use those links. All right, so that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this type of content, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you do not like the content, please give it a thumbs up anyway, but tell me down below in the comments why you didn't like it and we can make future videos better. If you're not already watching me on Instagram, please consider doing so. That's where I post pictures of projects like this become future videos. Once again, thank you so much for getting this far. Thank you so much for watching the video and don't forget to be inspired. I showed you what was on the inside. I cut a little bit of wood away. I did a couple little screws to put them Oh man. Kidding me? Totally forgot about.